seem to strike out of nowhere sometimes. A sudden wave of sadness, maybe a burst of anger at family or friends. Well, new research shows that it may have more to do with the past than it does with the present. And there are some questions that you can ask yourself to outsmart your own mood swings. Dr. Sylvia Gearing joins us now to tell us how to do this. We love when you're here, Sylvia, because you give oh, us these great tips on dealing oh. with very realistic things. Yes, things that we struggle with yeah. every day. Yes, I hope so, so. How does your past affect your current mood? That's a great question. What happens is that when you go through a situation that is stressful or unpleasant or whatever, your mind begins to create what we call belief systems around that situation. And those belief systems don't go away when the situation resolves. <laughs> you begin to believe kind of whatever negative belief system has, has arisen and you carry that forward and begin to see kind of like looking through a lens of a camera you begin to see reality that way. Mm -hmm. So these, these moods can come out of nowhere because you're triggered without knowing that you're being triggered because of the underlying belief systems. Triggered mm -hmm. by something that we don't even realize. So how do we, be, if we don't realize what's right. triggering us, how do we right. get a handle on it? Yeah, well, first of all, understand that you're not always in control of what you're feeling in any given moment. You're gonna have reactions that you can use for your own benefit, okay? Like I'm, I'm, I have a shift in mood. Why do I feel so crummy right now? It's usually related to something in the environment that's triggered it. Mm. The thing is, though, just because you're feeling it, you don't have to go with it. You have a choice as to where you put your thoughts and your emotions. Always follow the thoughts. There are things that you can do to get yourself out of that. And what are some of those things? Yeah, first of all, you have to understand that a trigger is responsible for what's happening. Okay, It's, it's not... It's not something that you have to accept. You also have to understand that your thoughts and what you're, what you're thinking right now are not facts. They're just guesses and hypotheses about what's occurring. My mom calls it old tapes. Right. When mm. old tapes start to play. Oh, and right. You react then. And, and everybody has them. And understand this, when those old tapes were invented by your mind, they made sense. They fit the situation ah, that you were dealing that's with. Good stuff. That's a really important point, because yeah. it helps you figure out, like, why am I so oversensitive to this issue? And it usually happened when you were like 14 or something. Mm -hmm. So are we like, are we literally in like a constant thought process of trying to identify these triggers? I like, think so. Yeah. I think so. Especially, especially Marcus, if your mood shifts to the negative. Right. Especially for all of us who are control freaks like myself, mm -hmm. you don't want to have a mood that sneaks up on you. You want to feel like you are in control of what's happening feeling wise and thought wise. So is this maybe about really learning and we talk about this all the time about living in the moment mm -hmm. but yes. really learning how to if yeah. you are in a bad mood sort of identify why am I in a bad mood and if you really can't answer that question right. then right. maybe go okay so yeah. I guess it's something that d yeah. doesn't exist yeah. anymore yeah and just because you're having that mood doesn't mean that you have to act on those feelings mm -hmm. you can resist that and kind of govern your own behavior oh that's and so hard to do it that is takes a strong mm -hmm. person it to does do that. but it's a discipline and that's what we teach as psychologists though we want you to learn how to be more emotionally regulated right. we teach you skills to do that do you like mantras and meditation and things like that we, as, as we tools? love that we love mindfulness meditation we, we teach that all the time and again mindfulness is you know being in the moment and accepting without judgment what you're experiencing. And it's that's so interesting, I'm sorry ahead, Marcus, because we talk about like uh, talking through things and stuff like that and, and identifying right. when I try and meditate, my right. mind just starts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So right. how do you stop it? Right. I do it again and again mm -hmm. and again. It really, we call it monkey mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you, we, you have to tame, tame your mind and train yourself to calm down. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing the kind of focus you have once mm -hmm. you meditate. Yeah, because I, I have right? talks with my friends at times because yeah. it, it's kind of parallel to what, what I was thinking. I always tell them because I'm, a, I'm good at not letting people's action control my reaction. Yes, yes. You know, and that, Ooh, that, I like that, that. Is not letting people's action, action control, control your reaction. reaction. Because you, you, if yeah. you respond in a way that's out of your character, right. you end up being mad at mm -hmm. yourself. Right. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's kind of like the triggers. Exactly. That's why I ask, how do you identify mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. is it a constant yeah work to try to identify but yeah i understand yeah. where you're coming from so much from. of it is being angry with ourselves with ourselves yeah. exactly right. right later especially for very accomplished people they don't they don't like to feel like they've misbehaved mm -hmm. you know that I've, i shot my mouth off when i shouldn't have yeah. you know <laughs> yeah. and, you, and that other person seems <laughs> yeah. to yeah. win on twitter, on twitter. Right. On twitter. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, when you were here last time, Sylvia, we were talking about, yeah. um, you know, grumpy husband syndrome. Right. And I wonder if men are a little bit more prone to this in some cases. Mm -hmm. than Because I know, like with Scott at home, he will get, he'll get in a bad mood about something. And nine times out of ten, it's because 
he's beating himself up over a decision yes. he made, something he said, something he yes. didn't do, so, you know. Yes, yes. And again, men do not bring that to light. They tend to harbor it. We were talking about that earlier. Mm -hmm. Ruminate and dwell on it and then hopefully work it through and let it go. Well, Lisa, it's funny yeah. you said that because when we, like, I, t I had this conversation with my wife. I said, usually the decisions that I make affect everybody. Mm -hmm. right. And yes. that's why we beat ourselves up so bad, yes. right? Yes, yes, exactly. Because it's like, okay, this is, it's not just me that you this is going to affect. You have to wait up your whole family. Just like when I was retiring from right. football. Right. right, I said, okay, this is not just you mm -hmm. retiring. Life changes. Everybody, yeah. yeah. Right. So Absolutely. it's, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Right. That's cool. And men get stuck in those feelings, too. They don't, according to the research, they don't experience as many feelings as women do. Mm -hmm. We have twice the emotional memory space in our brains. Oh, Duh. Wow. Uh, which kills us every time. That kills us. <laughs> Marcus, the <laughs> emotional <laughs> creature. Yes, we are. <laughs> so, uh, that yeah. makes it feel like you want to say emotional monster. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Was, was that a trigger? That was was that a trigger? Yeah. Good job, Marcus. You just me out there we go. <laughs> Well, so thanks true. for coming in. We, we love when you're here. You always Thank just shed you. light on stuff for us. Uh, we have more broadcast after the break. Stay with us.